For the record, OmiDG is the first smartphone company to send a new device to our channel, Smart Depot, for us to review. Now, this wouldn't have even been possible without our subscribers, viewers, and even members out there. So thank you so much for the faith and the support you've given us. But I want to test this new SOC. The processor in this phone, uh, Uni SOC T610 is new. I'm excited about this. The Omi Digi A13 Pro is about to receive one of the best reviews out there. And you know how we do it in Smart Depot. So if you're ready, let's get started. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Smart Depot. Let's go straight into the unboxing of the new Umedeji A13 Pro. We got the 6 gb RAM 128GB storage option, so what's inside the box? Inside the box, we see the phone itself already wearing a condom casing for protection, which we will pull out for now. The color is Sun Glow Gold. There's also Galaxy Blue and Starry Black in the color options. There is a manual that no one reads inside the box with a SIM ejector tool. There is a 10 watts charger, aka 5 volts to ampass normal charger, and a USB Type C. Now let's power it up and go into the review. The first thing that stands out about this phone is the design language. It takes after the iPhone design. I love the customizable key button but the software is even more impressive. The stock Android software and no bloatware on a Chinese OEM Android phone is disruptive. It feels as if you're using a Google Pixel interface. Opening apps oh, is so fast and very responsive. The new Uni SoC T610 paired with 6 gig of RAM makes user experience and multitasking battery smooth. After installing over 60 apps, the phone was still flying with over 2 gigs of RAM left to spare. The dark team looks nice too. We will push this phone to the extreme at the end of this video playing PUBG Mobile with the possible highest setting which is smooth and ultra. So make sure you watch till the end to enjoy that experience. In terms of value for money, this is the best value for money Android phone with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gig of internal storage. We will still have to test the processor later in the video. And to add more value, this phone has global LTE band, including LTE band 66, that is only available on flagship devices. Still talking about value, you can add value to our channel by clicking on that subscribe button, turn on notification bell icon, and follow us on our social media handles. Our video sponsor for today, Omidigi, is doing a special giveaway on their Facebook page. The links to the giveaway will be in the description. Who knows, you might be the lucky winner. When it comes to a new smartphone, we all want to know whether the camera would deliver great pictures. Starting from the 16 megapixel selfie camera, let's see how it fares. In good lighting condition, it takes quality selfies with good details and dynamic range. Selfies are averaging low light and yes, I still don't like that face smooth in the future. The choice of using Sony 48 megapixel main sensor for the main camera paid off. The details, dynamic range, depth and general photo quality is on point. The 8MP wide angle camera is wide enough but there's a disparity in quality between it and the 48 mp main camera of course that was expected the 5 mp macro camera surprised me here is a picture from the main camera and a closer shot with the macro camera impressive video recording in low light is fair enough but there's a key feature that the stock camera app lacks. Open camera have this feature and you can see the difference it makes from the recorded video. 
Now this is exposure auto lock. Hopefully, Umidiji should or maybe should add that with updates, uh, software updates. The battery life is so good. <laughs> Do we even need to talk about it? I mean, I tried my best to run it down from 9 a.m. in the morning doing all the throttling benchmark tests and it didn't go down. The charging, the charging is where I have a problem because there's no quick charge, but I measured it. It could really, really charge with two amps. The fingerprint reader is averagely quick enough for a mid-range phone and um, it's very usable. The screen itself is actually taller than my Poco F3. And you know, side by side, it did still hold its own, you know, over a 120 hertz screen. Now, talk about screen performance uh, in the night. So, this is uh, the dark room, and it's kind of very, very good. You know, very, very good. Uh, um, you just have to see it for yourself. Good uh, screen. But what impressed me most is the audio. Now, listen. The audio from the speaker is very, very impressive. And not just that, uh, it's not too busy, but the quality is good. The sound and the call is good. Stop, let me hear, let me hear. Okay, so, what did you bring back to us? <laughs> Still on the sound and audio, the Bluetooth is so good. I was able to connect two Bluetooth at the same time and I can switch from one to the other one if I want to. I wish the two could talk at the same time, but uh, that's quite impressive because switch, switch this one or to the other one. When it comes to 4G LTE uh, speed, of course, I had the Poco F3 around. I have to pair them. The first test, uh, Poco F3 really, really blew it away. But then I had to run a second test to realize that, of course, <laughs> the Umidigi <laughs> did take the lead. Yeah, I was surprised by the system updates. I mean, I got two system updates. Immediately I connected to the Wi-Fi network, I got an update. And after updating, I still got a new system update, which is very impressive. Now, this is what I've been waiting for, the throttling test. You see, I've realized that even Snapdragon processors do throttle and even uh, MTK do throttle. But look at this one, 93% performance. You know, there is little to no throttling on this uh, Uni SoC T610. Of course, I'm going to run you through the benchmark. Um, not uh, that a benchmark person, but I know some of you, you know, like it. Now, look at how smooth Antutu benchmark ran on this, you know, when I was, you know, doing this. So, it, it's, it is, it's, it's, I just wanted to see it. I did it at a very high temperature and it still delivered. See, up to 47 degrees of temperature, it still delivered. There was a throttle, but it recovered and, you know, produced a good result. On a cooler temperature, of course, the CPU improved. Talking about games, uh, every light game just flew like a breeze from Asphalt Nitro. It was just so good, you know, flying around. And then I did uh, Road Warrior, uh, Dead Paradise, and it was flowing like very, very, very smooth. There was no problem that. I have to play PUBG as promised earlier in the video, and I had to push it to the highest setting, which is here, Smooth Ultra. Now, that's quite some height setting. Let's see how this phone is going to push it in terms of the temperature, the gameplay. Well, the gameplay on this higher setting is really, really smooth. As you can see, the temperature here is about 45 degrees. Phone is already hot. We started about 8.45 p.m. Very hot temperature. Now, we'll play the game and we'll keep playing the game. I want to push this thing to see whether it can actually stop or break down or something. Let's just give it the most difficult task of a high temperature gameplay. Of course, it did send me a warning when the temperature got so high. I ignored it. You want to see where the temperature is? It was 55 degrees centigrade and that is high. So I'm happy that this had a protection for high temperature, but it played the game till the end. If this video gets enough likes, I will upload the PUBG full gameplay in another video. So make sure you like and subscribe. Well, my final thought is quite an interesting one. I am 
well, well impressed by this device. So I'm going to tell you uh, the key things that impressed me. Uh, the SOC, I was keen to test this new processor, Uni SOC T610. Uh, it's a mid-range uh, SOC, but it stood. Now look at the, the throttling test. It scored 93%, you know, within an average uh, room temperature. And then when I played PUBG in a very hot temperature, over 34 degree average day temperature, and there was no AC, there was no special cooling, and I decided to push it, it was able to play all through PUBG with high and smooth. And it's 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 amazing. It's of course I have my I have the few things I have against it. Uh, first of all, there is no quick charge. So it takes about two hours plus for it to fully charge. Uh, but the battery life is great. So if you charge it once, it can carry you for a day or two, depending on the way you are using. It carries me over a day, even in my high power usage. So um, the other thing I will say I did not just like about it is um, some of the camera is limited in terms of option. Is a 48 MP camera, there is no ability to shoot the whole 48 MP and um, that's just uh, another thing that I uh, didn't just like. Okay, let me hear from you in the comment section. There will be more videos from this device. I will compare it with uh, Snapdragon and MediaTek processors. I will do a review after one month. And let me hear from you in the comment section. What do you want me to talk about? What do you want me to do on the phone? And possibly I might even get a Gcam for it. <laughs> so make sure you subscribe and turn the notification bell icon. And until I see you in the next time, peace. Subscribe. I'll see you.